Parkour, parkour! Parkour, parkour! Your mind jumps straight to Assassin's Creed, but there's plenty of games out there that employ what it is in the end, just the fastest way from point A to point B. There's Watch Dogs, which is just Assassin's Creed in modern day. There's Prince of Persia, the cooler Assassin's Creed. Uncharted isn't Assassin's Creed, but it's much less a free-flowing path of least resistance and more so a scripted line of cool jumps. Spider-Man has some good hops, but the trouble is that to really capture the free-running feeling, you have to resist the urge to web everywhere, which is both impossible because web swinging is sex and stupid because the engine was designed to use those little jumps and flips as connective movements, not the full meat of traversal, which makes everything feel stilted and off somehow. Spider-Man flies more than he runs, which is how it should be. Obviously, Minecraft parkour is ubiquitous, but flashy and fluid, it certainly is not, so it doesn't really give me the feeling I crave. There was also this game called Vector that had a trailer which blew my pants off when I was 12. But the downside of it being a 2D platformer is you don't have that feeling of coming at a path from any different angle. You're railroaded, taking the free out of free running. Let's rewind the tape. The year is 2010. I'm nine years old. I'm obsessed with ninjas and parkour, and I just got my first Steam account on the family PC. I bought five games right off the bat. Team Fortress 2, Counter-Strike Source, two bullshit indie games. One was a story about my uncle, real title, which I never finished because I couldn't do the platforming, and the other was some crapshoot RPG maker game about a bird. Lastly, there was a little game called Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge is a first-person parkour game set in a highly stylized dystopian future parceled together with a storyline I kinda wish I could opt out of because while it's not terrible, it's not really anything at all. I loved Mirror's Edge. Despite being 10 years old, it still has enough worth to go back and play today, but it's not perfect. It's a flawed masterpiece. They threw in unnecessary combat sequences with clunky design, Level outline is hit or miss, and of course, missteps with first-person parkour is something Yahtzee's warned us about dozens of times. But despite that, everyone I've ever spoken to about the game holds it in high esteem. It touched something golden, and that glimpse was enough. I wanted more. So, when the sequel came out, I was pumped! When I played it, I was heartbroken. It's an open world, you have loads of new abilities, but all of the abilities start off locked. And to unlock the sweet shit that makes parkour unbearably delicious, you have to do a ton of tedious checklist stuff, climb towers, go through restrictive tunnel levels, collect minute, obscure objects. So, with a flawed masterpiece in one hand and a bundle of wasted potential in the other, Mirror's Edge went out with a whimper, only a shadow of what it could have been. With a tear in my eye, I moved on and I forgot all about parkour and video games save for the occasional brush with Ezio Baldatore. Is that his fucking name? Who knows? Fast forward to today. Cyberpunk just got a killer anime and everyone is lapping up the genre like dehydrated desert dogs. I'm greatly looking forward to 2077 when it's well and truly completed, but until then I'm biding my time and substituting with other games in the genre. I'm currently playing through the original Deus Ex, but I also stumbled across a game called Ghost Runner. Ghost Runner is a first-person parkour game set in a highly stylized, dystopian future, parceled together with a storyline that I wish I could opt out of, because while it's not terrible, it's not really anything at all. Sound familiar? I loved Ghost Runner. It felt like a spiritual successor to the game I had fallen for so many years ago. Yeah, the story is still shit, and yeah, first-person parkour is still clumsy as hell, but it's polished so many edges to a mirror sheen. Mirror, mirror, edge, mirror, mirror. <laughs> it streamlined restarting, it committed to combat being a feature, and implemented it into the movement. It really let the pathways spread out. I remember finding shortcuts that didn't feel legal, but worked, and still took skill to pull off. It felt so fucking sweet! Yeah, it still had dumbass puzzle sections and a lame story, but the raw parkour is back, and it's juicy! You can cut through bullets! You have a grappling hook! You're the man! If Mirror's Edge was a game unto itself, powerful in its unique premise, Ghost Runner is an unapologetic thief. It robbed Mirror's Edge's whole deal, super hot, Katana Zero, Cyberpunk 2077, probably, and I'm glad it did. This game slaps. 
I hate it when video essays become weird and emotional at the end, so I won't do that. The point is that you should totally play these games. Also, I love parkour. Also, I hope more games like this are made. If we could put the devs of Ghost Runner on a Mirror's Edge reboot, I'd fucking implode. And also, another kick-ass cyberpunk one-hit kill game is called Akana. You crash a bike in the center of town, and you're gonna die. Take out as many motherfuckers as you can before then. Last Stand style. It's crack to play. Check it out. I don't have a finale for this. Both games are fun. Bye.